Awesome. Um, one more thing, and then I'll, I'll get to the last, the last bit we would do, which is do a sync draft. But um, the last one I was curious about is, um, and maybe we can just do like one or two, not to take too much time, too much more time. But um, I, I heard that uh, someone one time who was a, in pro-life, so doing a lot of um, debates in that, in that sense, someone asked him one time, do you ever get nervous getting up there on stage at like a college campus? She said, no, never, because they always have the exact same three to four uh, arguments. And so it's basically just regurgitating that. W- what do you think are some of the top one or two? Um, I, I know there's tons, but like what one or two objections you typically get? Well, I mean, here in the Tulsa area, the landscape mm-hmm. is Protestant dominant. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the objections that are posed and the questions that come up always have to do with Mary and the saints. I mean, that ranks mm-hmm. at the top. Yeah. with regard to why ask the Blessed Mother to pray for you. It's often mm-hmm. posed as, why do you pray to Mary when you can go straight to Jesus? Yeah. So that's sort of um, the top-ranked question mm-hmm. when it comes to the whole Catholic-Protestant dialogue, right? Yeah, yeah. And when it comes to you know talking with atheists and agnostics, the probably the number one challenge that they're going to have is some species of the problem of evil. You know, and mm-hmm. trying to reconcile God's goodness with the mm-hmm. existence of evil in the world. And mm-hmm. so that's going to always rank at the top. And rightfully so. I mean, because that's yeah. a legitimate problem. You can f- we all feel the weight of that problem, both theists yeah. and atheists alike. And yeah. we have to wrestle with that question and to yeah. work on reconciling what we believe about God's goodness and his permission of evil. Uh, yeah. Intellectually, it's a rock solid argument where mm-hmm. we can reconcile those two. But yeah. there's always an emotional um, burden to bear there to emotionally yeah. accept that intellectual reconciliation. Yeah. And I could see that being a tough one because if someone's coming with that objection, there may be a chance that they're coming from like a, maybe a, a trauma in the past or maybe sure. some kind of experience where it's like, you don't want to just dive right into that one and start saying something. And all of a sudden they're getting their feelings hurt and they're putting up walls yeah. and stuff. Cause then it's your sh- yeah. Yeah. And it's, within our and within our cultural landscape, you know, given the hot button issues of our day, yeah. obviously, you know, it's going to revolve around sexual ethics yeah. and the church is teaching concerning our sexuality. So where mm-hmm. whenever we give a voice to what the church teaches and what we know through philosophical reasoning about God's design for our human sexuality and it conflicts with the mm-hmm. lifestyle choices that are encouraged, celebrated, and prevalent within our contemporary culture, mm-hmm. those are the major issues that arise there. Yeah. And so yeah. we have to deal with the charges of being hateful, bigoted, intolerant, mm-hmm. and, um, and judgmental. And these are issues that I deal with in my newest book, my latest book, The New Relativism, Unmasking mm-hmm. the Philosophy of Today's Woke Moralists. So those yeah. are hot button issues and major challenges mm-hmm. that we face given the climate of our co- contemporary culture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And those are tough ones. So get the book, check it out. And so just in case it comes up, because it may be up at some point. So <laughs> yeah. awesome. Well, hey, bro, to close, we typically do what we call the Saint Draft. And I don't know if you're a big sports guy, right? You like sports? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, well, yeah. I know yeah, what a yeah, draft yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, okay, gotcha. So so we go back and forth, and we're, we're building our team, and we'll do starting five plus a six-man, and we're just building our team of saints, if they were alive today, with, like which team would save the world. And I always remind people there's, like for viewers, I know you know this, is that there's no wrong answers, obviously. The, the team of five, no matter what, would be great. Um, and then we've had all sorts of people come on. It's hilarious because they make their rules of like, okay, well, I would pick Mary first. I'm like, okay, well, okay, maybe Mary's off the table because she's obviously a, a number one. So Mary and Jesus are the coaches. They're the, they're the, the on the sideline, we'll pick saints from there. So, All right. um, yeah, and then you can give a little brief of, like, why you would pick that person. Um, it could obviously be short. But we'll go through starting five, and then we'll let people comment below what they think. And so I'll let you go first. All right. Well, I, I, can we start – can we use the apostles? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. So I would draft uh, St. Paul for his evangelistic zeal and endeavor okay. and his yeah. intensity to okay. preach the gospel and share the gospel. Nice. Steve um, Kunzweil, I took him. Do I, conti- well. do I continue? Uh, we'll go back and forth. Okay. So now I'll take my first, first right. overall. You just take the, off, off the starting part. All right. So I would do, um, honestly, probably John the Baptist then. If Jesus okay. said he's the most righteous man, I'd probably go with, with John the Baptist. There you go. Baptist. That's pretty yeah. darn good, man. Yeah. yeah, so I would draft, I guess now, uh, St. Augustine. Okay. 
okay. for his deep theology and his experience of the radical transformation. So he's sort of the saint of radical conversions and transformations. Yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah. there's a need for radical conversions uh, within mm -hmm. our culture. So I think St. Augustine would fit well for that purpose. Absolutely. He, um, we watched a movie on him, I believe, on Formed or something. It was one of those oh. little small films. It's great. I wish I could remember what it was called. But um, all right. So number two, I would probably go with someone like as a, as a faith warrior to be that, that rock. And I would go um, St. Catherine of Siena. Okay. Beautiful. So, I'm still learning a little bit more about her, but what I've known so far, she's awesome. And uh, yeah, so she would, she would definitely be on there up up the top. Yeah. So I would go with St. Thomas Aquinas okay. on the intellectual front mm -hmm. to have the intellectual giant in both theology and philosophy to <laughs> yeah. articulate in a systematic mm -hmm. way our faith and present it with clarity. Okay. Then... I would probably go next uh, to get around the world, and he did it so well back in the day, and I feel like he would do it even even better now, especially if we just got him a private jet and baptized the whole world as St. Francis Xavier. Okay. Imagine the, the, how much more he would have gotten done if he would have had just a great way to get around. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go, so I got uh, three so far, so I'm going to yep. go with St. Therese of Lisieux. Okay. And her... Um, her system, her, her teaching, her mm -hmm. witness to the little way of love and yeah. being uh, giving us a way to love our Lord with great intimacy in our everyday mm -hmm. activities, which is needed yeah. for the layperson. Yeah, absolutely. Well, she, isn't it true too that like she, a lot of her discovery of, of her, like just like a doctor of the church, like was actually later on, right? Because when, like, I think I heard someone say one time that when it came to writing her eulogy, the other sisters or whatever were like, I don't know what to write. She didn't do much. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, you've heard I, that. I, I haven't. I'm not, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm mm -hmm. not very well read on the lives mm -hmm. of the saints. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know a lot of yeah. details about I wouldn't say th I, their lives. And, and I, I'll have to look that up. I don't know if that's true. No one quote me on that. I don't know if that's <laughs> I'm, Oh, I think it is. Uh, all right. So I like to go family life next. And these two kind of like, they're a pair. And it's the parents of St. Lisieux. But I, if I had to pick one, I would definitely go uh, St. Sally Martin. Okay. And then my fifth would be Pope St. John Paul II. Mm. And just, uh, I mean, what he did for the church was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now I'd probably round up mine. I have to be with the uh, the patron of this this podcast, St. Philip Neri. He's just there you go. a great guy. Uh, he's patron saint of joy, second apostle of Rome, just an awesome overall guy. Um, and then finally, one more to the sixth man. I like to do to throw in a blessed in there, maybe someone that's not quite a saint yet. Uh, I guess blessed Pierre Giorgio Frasati mm, for yeah. uh, for our youth out there and yeah. his zeal and love mm -hmm. for the Lord and nature. And yeah. so that kind of maps on with Pope John Paul II. But I'll, I guess I'll go with him. Yeah, and only blessed for a little bit longer too. So canonization next year. Oh, really? Is it? I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah, they, they announced it recently. Um, yeah, it'll be 2025. I don't remember if there's like an actual, I think there is an actual date or something. But uh, okay. yeah, it'll be the official uh, next year. Um, awesome. Then I would, honestly, uh, a born and raised Oklahoma boy. So I probably have to go blessed Stanley Rother. There you go. That'd be great. Uh, so when you guys comment below, obviously there are no wrong answers on this one, but we will share this as well. We'll clip these as well to be like its own video, but okay. awesome. Well, well, Carlo, uh, thank you so much for coming on and, and uh, being part of this. Uh, it's always good to talk to you and uh, Absolutely. I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch and, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, buddy. God bless.